house, and I'm so thankful that one day we're going to see him. Uh, I want to be more dedicated than I've ever been because we're living in the last of the last days, and the Lord could come at any time. We don't hear a whole lot about the rapture, but it could come. He could come tonight while we're sitting here uh, to take us out. And uh, where is your heart? Is your heart okay? Is it under the blood? You know, I just can't uh, do enough for the Lord. And at my age, I think, Lord, have I let too much time pass and done too little? Um, if you're young, just put your whole heart into serving the Lord. Amen. Do what you can to win others, you know. Go out and win others to the Lord and bring them in. Because one day it'll be worth it all when we see Christ. If you know the song, sing it with me tonight. Of times the day seems long and our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to
like to stand for the reading of God's Word tonight. Just two verses. I'm going to be easy on you. Two verses here tonight. God is so good. Thank you, sweet Lord. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 27, verse 10. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's admonishing these, these group of men, this, this soldier, this centurion soldier, and, and the men under him. They're getting ready to take this voyage on this trip here in the book of Acts. And it says in Acts chapter 27, verse 10, Paul admonished them, saying, And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Hallelujah. Let me read one more time, can I? And it said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, now that's a big word, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Hallelujah. And I would like to speak tonight, maybe I can title this just one word, shipwreck. Shipwreck. Can we all pray and ask the Lord to send down a special anointing tonight? Hallelujah. God is so good. Blessed Father in heaven, Lord, I come to you, Lord, your servant tonight, Lord. Lord, standing here before your children in this house tonight, in your house, I pray, Father, would you send a special anointing? Would you touch each and every heart by your sweet spirit tonight? Help us to receive what you're, you would have us to receive tonight. And we ask it all in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody said, Amen. you may be seated. Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. God is so good. I'm speaking tonight on a title, just one word, shipwreck, shipwreck. You know, when I think of the word shipwreck, I think of storms, don't you? You know, if a ship's going to wreck, it's probably because of a storm. Probably because of the storm. It looks like we're about ready to get one here in a minute. Shipwreck, the storms of life. You feel like you're going through a storm tonight? You know, only God knows the heart that's hurting. Only God sometimes can know that hurting heart. Now, God sees everybody, doesn't he? There's nothing. The Bible says that, that everybody is naked when it comes before the, to the eyes of the Lord. He sees you. He sees where you've been. God sees where you're at tonight. God sees what's going to happen tomorrow and next week. He knows what you're about to do. He knows it all, doesn't he? For he's God. God sees you and God hears you. Hallelujah. When you pray. And I'll be honest with you tonight, which I'm honest with you every night. I'm so glad you're here tonight if you're hurting. Hallelujah, if you're hurting. Hallelujah. You know, you could have made the decision to sit home tonight, but you didn't. You came out to the house of the Lord. And I believe God rewards people that do that, that want to help themselves. Now, I like to help people, but I like to help those even more, Brother Atkins, that like to help themselves. Seems like it makes it a lot easier, Brother Ken. It does. When you see people that want to help themselves. Hallelujah. You, you know, when we hurt, we could just give up, throw everything in the suitcase and leave. But that ain't going to solve no problems, is it? Hallelujah. I believe tonight that we hear when we hurt that there is a voice. I'm talking about the children of God tonight. There's a voice that screams out from way down deep 
that is trying to tell us that there is help out of our bad situation. I believe it with all my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, everything is not lost when we're going through our storms. You know, we can't stop the storms, can we? We can't stop the storms. I'll tell you, you now, uh, you know, we're living in this, in these last days and with all this technology and all this, all these, uh, what is it, apps. You know, I, me and my kids, we sort of have this thing going. They've got this one weather app and I've got this other weather app. And I say that my weather app is more accurate. And they say, Richard Wayne, that his uh, weather app is more accurate. And, uh, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes his is and sometimes mine is. But we can almost figure out when those kind of storms are coming, can't we? But we don't know all the time when the storms, the devil is going to send a storm our way. We don't know. But if we knew, we'd be prepared, wouldn't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you know we can't change things after they've happened. I can't change the past. Can you, Brother Jerry? I can't change the past, Brother Terry. Brother Jason, I can't change the past. I can't. You know, what's done's done. What's over is over. What's sown is sown. What's done is done. We need to let all that go, don't we? We need to understand all that's behind us, Brother Jerry. All of that's behind us. Hallelujah. You know, there's probably a number of reasons why everything happened. And I'm going to tell you, we could sit down for hours and hours and hours and try to say, hey, well, this, if it wasn't for this or if it wasn't for he or she or whoever or it wasn't for my mama raising me this way or my whatever, we can go out down all those roads. It's easy to say all that, but that's not going to help things, is it? No, it's not. There are a lot of contributing factors on why we get caught up in, in such hard times or these difficult disappointments or these difficult situations. But when you're hurting and when you're angry, when you feel like you're a dead end at your life, you know, really, who cares about everything in the past? When you're hurting, do you ever, have you ever really hurt in your heart and your soul? Can I ask you tonight, how much pressure, how much stress can a man take? How much stress and pressure can a woman take? Have you ever asked yourself that? In the storms of life. Preacher, I can't take it anymore. I can't handle no more. Why is God be treating me like this? Why do I always have it so bad? Why do I have to be so sick in my body? My mind is confused. My body isn't able to bear it. Preacher, my heart is so broken that nobody could put my heart back together. I'm speaking tonight on the title, Shipwreck. You know, I've been pastoring for a few years now, and I'm not no, I ain't, I ain't no expert on this by no means. But I have seen some stories of shipwreck. I know what shipwreck's about, Brother Charlie Brown. I have seen some families. I've seen, I've watched people's lives. I've seen, I've seen marriages fail. I've seen, I've seen families. I've seen lives lose out all because of shipwreck. The storms of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sickness, death, infidelity, sin, you name it. 
the storms that beat down upon us sometimes. The enemy of our soul trying to destroy us and bring us down. Hallelujah. The enemy of our soul. The devil is out to destroy you, my friend, my sister tonight, my brother tonight. He's out to destroy anything good that's of God. You know, we must understand that anything that would cause you and I to actually go down in defeat is not of God. Period. If anything comes our way that would actually cause us to lose out with God or to be destroyed, to destroy our family, to destroy our marriage, to destroy our relationship with God. It didn't come from God. God doesn't send that. You know, that is the number one mistake that people get it in their head. They get it into their minds that it was all God's fault. That's foolish thinking. That kind of thinking is put in our minds by the enemy to discourage us and to make us give up. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you or suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. To bear it, my friend. To bear it. The Apostle Paul here in that scripture right there, we have to understand he's talking to people that are saved. He's talking to church people. He isn't talking to unsaved people. That tells me that, you know what? We're going to have temptations. We're going to have storms being the children of God. You know, if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you aren't being led by the sweet spirit of God, anything's possible to happen in your life, in your family. And I say that respectfully. I say that in love. If you're not being led by the sweet spirit of God and being saved... What do we expect? I wouldn't want to be led or, or walk in this old world out there. I, do, I don't want to be walking in that grocery store without God, Brother Atkins. I don't want to be out in Walmart now without God in my heart. Hallelujah. I'm in the hands of God. Hallelujah. You know, a man or a woman that is not saved is not living in the protection of God. How can anyone blame God that doesn't know God? How can we blame God if we don't know Him? Matthew 7, verse 21. Jesus said this, Not everyone that saith unto me... Now this is when we stand before the judge, Jesus. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have, have we not prophesied in your name? Haven't we in thy name have cast out devils? In thy name we've done many wonderful works. And Jesus said, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work sin, ye that work iniquity. Jesus said that there will be many that will claim to know him, to know the Father, know Jesus. They will claim to be on God's side, that some will do great works. They'll have the programs. They'll have this. They'll have that. In the, and all in the name of Jesus, go as far as cast out devils. Now that's something to see, isn't it? 
But he will tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. Because their sin has separated themselves from God. Can we understand how can we blame someone for doing something or causing something that really has nothing to do with it at all? My friend, tonight, we need to get on God's insurance policy, don't we? So to speak. We need to get underneath that protection. Hallelujah. How did that old... uh, That advertisement say you're in good hands. I wasn't going to say the name. (laughs) In good hands. That's where I want to be. Hallelujah. All God. That's where I want to be. All God. How about you? We can get underneath that insurance policy. and Hey, hey, my friend, it ain't going to cost you a dime. It was all paid for on Calvary. Hallelujah. I want to be underneath that insurance plan, Brother Jerry. Hallelujah. Let me be under that insurance. That's a whole life policy. Man, I just thought of that. A whole life policy. God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Let the Lord guide your life tonight. Let him guide it. If you aren't being led by God, if his spirit isn't leading you and guiding you, then you're in the wrong boat, my friend. You're in the wrong ship, period. There's only one ship that will ever take you through this life that will be able to handle the storms of our life. And that is God's ship. God's ship. Hallelujah. Man can't build a ship that can't be sunk. Or sank. He can't. Remember the Titanic? And I wasn't I wasn't born in Brother Charlie. I don't think even Brother Charlie was born when the Titanic sank, was he? Brother Charlie's taking the fifth. <laughs> Not even the Titanic. They said it was unsinkable. I remember it. My mom and daddy, they had a puzzle. Of the Titanic, we used to work that puzzle all the time. And you could read the newspaper print on that puzzle. The Titanic, they said it wouldn't sink, but it sank, didn't it? Yes, it did. Hallelujah. Well, not hallelujah. (laughs) The other boats will break up. Your boat will break up, my friend. Your boat will break up. Your ship will break up. But God's ship will never fail. It'll never sink. Hallelujah. You know, soon as the storms of life come by, those other kinds of ships that people like to get into will sink. Come on now, you know it. Hallelujah. We can give God a chance. How about it? Try living a life in Christ if you're not living one. Hallelujah. God is your answer. It's worked for me. It's worked for many hearts and souls that are out here tonight. A life in Christ. A life in Jesus. Hallelujah. It's working. Hallelujah. Try Jesus, the song says. He never fails. Drugs is not your answer. Alcohol is not the answer, my friend. I ain't making eye contact. A new man or a new woman in your life is not your answer. I mean, my wife now. Maybe I shouldn't go down this road. I'll mess up my bologna, my fried bologna. You know, he said, now, when, when you die, you know, you're going to go get married again. Have you ever, you know, I ever had that conversation? Maybe I should shut up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm digging a hole here. Brother Riley, I'm digging a hole. No fried bologna for a month for me. I told her, I said, honey, if, some, if, you, if you pass before I do, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, I'm going to get me a nice dog. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I ain't going to tell you what she said. But anyways, I don't know where I get off on that. But anyways, but God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. But a new man, you know, people look for... I don't mean to say this the way it's going to sound. They look for love in all the wrong places. They do. 
Hallelujah. They don't look. You know, Jesus is the one that gives us our joy. Jesus gives us our peace. Hallelujah. Jesus can direct our life if we ask him to. It's that simple. When we live for him in that place where he can help us and he can be with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you ever really tried Jesus? I'm not talking about repeating some men's words. I'm talking about getting down on your knees and seeking God and finding the Lord and finding this wonderful salvation. Hallelujah. Making the promise in your heart that, Lord, no matter whatever comes my way, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. I'm going to be that man that you'd have me to be. I'm going to be that woman you'd have me to be. Hallelujah. I want to be that person and that you can use, that you can count on, Lord. Hallelujah. We can get to that place when we really, truly get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Getting serious with God. Hallelujah. Turning from the old life that we came from and starting this new life in Christ Jesus. Oh, how sweet it is. Hallelujah. God is so good. You know, many want religion, but they don't want a relationship with God. And because they don't read their Bible, because they don't pray, because they don't go to church, they will find themselves one day in shipwreck. And the first thing they'll say is, where is God? Where is God? You can't build your own ship and expect to survive these storms of life. You've got to get into a ship that's been designed to go through every storm of life that we could ever face. God's ship, God's ship will never wreck For Jesus, (laughs) Jesus is the captain of this ship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you all feeling this tonight? I'm starting to feel first sighted here. I'm getting, hallelujah. It doesn't matter how smart we think we are. It doesn't matter how much experience we've had in our life. Your own ship, your own thinking is not the answer. You got to get in the right ship. The right kind of ship. Listen to the man of God here tonight. Hallelujah. In our scripture reading tonight, this centurion soldier would not heed the words of the man of God. Paul said, he says, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the what you got on this ship, but also of our lives. And they wound up in a shipwreck. Acts 27 and 10. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Paul the apostle goes up to this soldier, this this captain or whatever he was, and tells him, hey, look, if you get on this ship, if we all get on this ship, we're going to find shipwreck. It's going to be a shipwreck. This boat is not going to float. There's going to be much hurt and much damage. My friend tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you tonight, by the mouth of His servant tonight, if you go ahead and get into your own kind of ship, there's going to be much hurt and there's going to be much damage. You do it your way, in your own thinking, in your own strength. Just like these men on this ship, you're going to lose. The man of God says here that you're going to lose the lading. You're going to, the things that you bring on this ship with you, and maybe even your lives, you're going to lose them. 
Mom and dads tonight, can I ask you, is your family riding on God's ship? Have you brought, have you brought your family aboard God's ship tonight? Are you taking them into the safety of God, God's hands? Are you willing to take your life and your family's life? Take a chance and wind up in shipwreck? I'm speaking tonight on the title Shipwreck. The Apostle Paul knew what pain was. He knew what suffering was. He knew what shipwreck was. He knew what danger was, perils were. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty four. 24, he said of himself, of the Jews five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Three times was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep of the sea, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own people, my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, in thirst, in fastings, in the cold, in the nakedness. Doesn't matter, my brother, my sister, tonight. It doesn't matter how bad our life seems, how hard and how rough the storm seems. We find that there are others who have really had it worse. Paul was a person of faith. He knew God. He loved God. He did. He had this relationship with God. He was a man that was filled with God's spirit. He wrote a big portion of this Bible, didn't he? Hallelujah. Did prison stop Paul? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Did shipwreck stop Paul? No, it didn't. Hallelujah. Did pain or hurt in his body, did that stop Paul? No. He was robbed from. He was lied to. You name it. He experienced it. One time he even had to be lowered out of a window because of death. They were going to kill him. Did that stop him from serving God? From going on with Jesus? No, it didn't. When we think of other people in the Bible, you know, the first person that I think of that has experienced the storm in his life would be Job. Right? We all know the story of Job, don't we? Job. Bible says that Job was a righteous man. Actually, he said that he was, he said that he knew what the goodness of God was. Is the Bible, does, is the Bible teaching that is bad things supposed to be Come to the people that, that love God, that do good things? I mean, is bad things going to happen to them? Job, he knew the goodness of God. For God himself said of Job, he said that Job was a perfect man, an upright man that feareth God, that it didn't have nothing to do with evil. And look what happened to brother Job. Look what the man had to go through. He lost his children. He lost his job. He lost his animals, his, all of his servants. And I don't want to go into all that, but he lost it all, Brother Terry. A righteous man going through the storms of his life. Even though Job knew God, yet his life came crashing in. God knew what Brother Job was all about. He told the devil. He knew what Job was about. God knew that Job was able to handle it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have allowed it to happen to Brother Job. That's simple. Like Brother Paul and Brother Job tonight, you may be saved. Perhaps you're not saved. 
Maybe you've been saved for years. Maybe you haven't been saved that long. But like Brother Paul or Brother Job, do you find yourself now stopped by a storm in your life? A sickness, a death. Are you hurting? Are you angry? Are you confused? Are you uncertain? And can I ask you a question if you're feeling any of that? Though all this has come upon you, are you still in Godship? Are you still in the safety, in the hands of God, in His ship? Why is it that when Christians start to feel the pressures that the devil pushes on them, the pressures, and they get disappointed, they get angry, they get upset, they get hurt, the enemy starts tightening it down on them. Why is it the first thing they want to do is jump out of the boat? Why is it they want to jump out of God's ship? You've got to stay in the ship. The man of God said, if you're going to be saved. Hallelujah. 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 You have to stay in the boat. Stay in the safety of the God ship. This isn't the time to jump out of the boat. This isn't the time to quit church. This isn't the time to quit praying, my friend. Stay in the arms of God. That is exactly what the devil wants you to do, is to jump out of the ship, to jump overboard. Don't drown in the waters of life. They're too cold. Stay in the arms of God. Later here in this story, the storm comes. The ship is being tossed. The waves of life, the waves are coming against this ship, beating against this ship. The winds of the storms beating against this ship. And this ship is experienced now, the shipwreck. And Paul tells the centurions, the soldiers, that, hey, there's, they're, they're laying down, they're, they're letting down the lifeboat. They're trying to get off the ship. Lest they stay in this ship, we're all going to die. You're going to die unless you stay in the ship, is what Paul told the centurion. This time, the centurion listened. He listened. Acts 27 and 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under the color at night, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Hallelujah. Ye cannot be saved. Sister Rachel and Sister Monica, if you'd like to come up, I'm about finished. Unless you stay in the ship, sir, you're not going to make it. If you jump out of this ship, you ain't going to make it. That's what the man of God told him. Lest you stay in the ship, you're not going to make it. Can I ask you tonight, do you feel like you've, you've reached the end in your life tonight? going through the storms in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your family? Are you disappointed tonight? Are you hurt? Who disappointed you? Who hurt you? God is not our problem. 
The church is not your problem. Your brothers and sisters really are not your problem. It's the enemy of your soul. The devil is your problem. He's your problem. He's my problem. He's everyone's problem. And Christ defeated him on the cross. You don't have to die in shipwreck. You don't, my brother. You don't, my sister. I'm not talking about people that come to church and that have no depth in God. I'm not talking about them kind of people here. For them kind of people that just come every once in a while, those are the ones that have no depth in God. I'm talking about people that don't pray. They don't read their Bible. They don't go to church. They don't worship God. And all the devil has to do to them kind of people is just make them a little jealous. And they'll lose out. You're always going to have people like that. Preacher didn't shake my hand. So and so is getting too much attention. Nobody calls on them. Nobody drank their punch at dinner. <laughs> and when they have their kerfuffle, they're like your, your last income tax refund check. They gone. Never to be seen again. Them are what you call religious people. But there are good people here tonight that's listening to me tonight that truly love God and are truly hurting. They are disappointed. I'm talking about people here tonight that love the Lord, that are hurt, that are hurting and they don't know what to do. Listen to the preacher tonight in closing. Just ride out the storm. Ride out the storm. It's going to pass. God's right there with you. You might not feel him. You might not see him in your storm. But his eyes are on you in his ship. Stay in the ship, my friend. Storms will come to your marriage. Storms will come to your family. Storms will come to your job. Storms will come in your church. We all are going to go through the storms. Stay in the ship. This same Paul wrote to young Timothy. He said, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me, I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hallelujah. Ride out your storm. Ride out your storm. Hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ride out your storm, my friend. If God is speaking anything to his children tonight, stay in the ship. Ride out your storm. Give me a key, sissy. I feel like singing. You've been in this storm And it seems like forever And your night of confusion Has been oh so long And your ship has lost anchor and the storm's got you drifting But the night's almost over Just ride out your storm 
Ride out your storm For God's right there with you Though you may not see Him But you're not alone You're hurting now But the morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm Oh, ride out your storm God's right there with you Though you may not see Him But you're not alone You're hurting now But the morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm Remember His promise He said, I'll never forsake you Though the waters are raging They'll do you no harm Don't give up the battle <laughs> For your answer is coming Hallelujah Just hold on to Jesus <laughs> And ride out your storm Ride out your storm God's right there with you Though you may not feel Him But you're not alone You're hurting now But the morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm How about it tonight? Are you hurting tonight? As they sing tonight Can I ask you tonight Are you hurting in your heart? Are you hurting in your soul? As the, tell, as the devil told you it's all lost has the devil told you just to give up to jump out of jump out of God's ship has he, he tells everybody that he tells everyone that anyone can be a quitter it's easy to quit but not me my brother not me my sister I think I'm going to hold on to Jesus just a little bit longer. <laughs> I think I'm going to read his word, Sister Gilly, just a few more times. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to get down on my knees and seek out my answer in Jesus, in God tonight. How about it tonight? How about it? Do you feel encouraged? Hallelujah. God loves you tonight. God loves you tonight. Everyone, it's will.